So, you're interested in becoming a range blaster player. Well, this is one of the slowest weapons out there, with poor ink efficiency, a very slow fire rate, and weak paint output. But, you also have this really cool long-range one-shot direct, so you know, that's pretty awesome. I'm Char, a Splatoon content creator and competitive player who's played Range Blaster for over five years through all three Splatoon games. While this weapon can be really difficult to pick up starting out, it's definitely worth it long term, and it's my favorite weapon of all time, so I'm gonna give you some basic tips to help you learn the weapon, and if you like this, you can check out my channel for even more content on Range Blaster. The first and most important thing to be aware of for any blaster weapon, but especially Range Blaster, is the idea of spacing. Basically, there's a specific distance you want to maintain from your opponent where you can reliably hit them with indirect blasts. This varies for every blaster, but this is known as your effective range. If you maintain this distance from your opponent, it's really easy to hit basic shots on them. Your goal for most fights is to maintain this effective distance as much as possible. If you shoot the opponent and they move backwards, you want to move forward to maintain that same distance. And if they go towards you, you want to move backwards, once again trying to mirror them. All this may sound really simple, but being able to read how your opponent is going to move is really difficult and takes a lot of time, especially with how slow the weapon is. So don't be afraid if you're not getting it right away. It can take some time to learn. On the topic of those indirect blasts, they're also really useful for poking people who are behind a little bit of cover or over a ledge. This is one of the main strengths of the blaster class, so you can always take advantage of where you're standing in places that are very awkward for your opponents to hit you, but easy for you to hit them with your explosion radius. Also keep in mind that how often you can do this depends on the map. Some stages are just more flat than others. Outside of indirect blasts, you of course have your one shot. Generally, this is a last resort if you're unable to hit people with your indirect blast radius. It's a way to clutch out fights, but it does require you hitting directly on the opponent. And since your weapon is very slow, there's a large margin of error when going for that. Getting to know the timing of your weapon and flicking to have your crosshair on the opponent is something that can take time to learn. The main thing to keep in mind is not to rush in and go for a direct every time. Often, it's easier to space and rely on your indirects for more reliable and safer damage. The last thing to keep in mind about Range Blaster is movement. This weapon, like I've said before, is really slow, and you have three main tools to give you a little bit of added mobility. The first two are the brand new Squid Roll and Squid Surge. These should be used to help you with your spacing and maintaining effective range. So don't always roll directly towards someone. Think, how can you roll that benefits you to making you harder to hit, but making your opponent easier to hit for you with indirects. The Squid Surge, on the other hand, is a much more high-risk, high-reward option. You can use it to pop out from climbing above a wall and direct someone before they can react to you. However, keep in mind, after Squid Surging high into the air, you're going to be descending to the ground, <laughs> making you an easy target for opponents. Jumping is for much smaller adjustments, since you obviously don't go as far, but a little bit of added mobility while you shoot can still be really helpful. Jumping is especially useful when trying to hit people who are on ledges above you, since it can give you a little bit of added height. I would also highly recommend running around two mains of intensify action, as they drastically reduce the RNG of your jumping and make the squid roll and surge better, both of which are very useful for this weapon. And there you go, a basic overview of how to play range blaster. This weapon is a bit difficult, so make sure you give yourself ample time to get used to it. You can also try playing some of the other blasters, which can often be a bit easier and a nicer starting point if you're looking to eventually move to this one. I hope this quick guide was able to help you pick up the weapon and make those aggressive plays. Thanks so much to Squidman for having me on here, and you can be sure to check out my channel in the description for more range blaster content. Have a good one.